Welcome to AP U.S. History. We'll be talking about the American Revolution. Uh, the shooting has started at Lexington and Concord, and this will continue um, up through 1781. Will be the last uh, significant battle at Yorktown, and it'll take another two years before a peace is finally uh, arrived at. How did the Americans get to this point? Uh, Partly by uh, cir circumstances, uh, happenstance, um, the colonists really, even after the shooting uh, at Lexington and Concord, were not ready to break with England. They still considered themselves loyal subjects of the king. The Second Continental Congress um, tries to figure out a way to resolve uh, uh, this bloodshed that's been spilled outside Boston. Um, they select uh, George Washington as their leader and they come up with a document called the Declaration of Causes and Necessities of Taking Up Arms. This was written uh, by Thomas Jefferson and John Dickinson. Uh, it, a second draft set of appeals to the King and, and Parliament um, pleading with them to bring this uh, situation to a peaceful resolution. Some see this as an intermediate step to the Declaration of Independence. Uh, the Olive Branch Petition was sent to the King. Uh, this was another last-ditch effort by moderates in Congress to prevent war. Uh, they pledged their loyalty to the King. They see Parliament as the real villains, not the King. And they plead for him um, for a peaceful resolution, uh, but the king uh, rejects it and calls them treasonous. Uh, Congress then uh, raises money uh, to fund an army and navy. <coughs> the Olive Branch Petition, a copy of it, sent to the king in 1775. Uh, blood continued to be spilled. Uh, Ethan Allen, Benedict Arnold uh, will capture a couple of outlying forts, Ticonderoga and Crown Point, in May 1775. They'll take the cannons from those forts, Ticonderoga, and bring them back to fight the British in Boston. Uh, Bunker Hill is the next uh, large battle, uh, one of the bloodiest of the Civil War, the Revolutionary War. Um, the colonists seized a place called Breed's Hill, um, and the British charge them, they lose a thousand men. Uh, the Americans are driven eventually from the position because they run out of gunpowder. Congress had only allocated uh, enough for eight shots, um, but the British uh, suffer uh, tremendous losses. This is a picture of Crown Point before the battle. This is the Battle of Bunker Hill, uh, and when they ran out of ammunition they were driven from the high position. Uh, the British will leave Boston and set up their base in New York. Uh, in the meantime, the King will hire 18,000 Hessian German soldiers to work as mercenaries to defeat the American colonists. Uh, a lot of Americans were shocked uh, at this. Uh, they believed this was an in-house situation and how dare the King bring in people uh, from Europe. Uh, Americans will attempt to invade Canada, but this will be unsuccessful. Uh, the time had come, apparently, for the Americans to leave. The, the British King and Parliament aren't in a mood to negotiate. Um, uh, there's a shift in loyalty among some Americans, uh, basically because of the hiring of the Hessians, uh, burning of uh, Falmouth and North Fork by the British. Um, another th uh, action taken by a royal governor of Virginia was to promise slaves freedom if they would fight for the British. Uh, another pamphlet that um, persuaded many that it was time to leave was Common Sense, written by Thomas Paine. Uh, insisted that the policies that the British were pursuing were inconsistent uh, and the only course was independence. The British had uh, 
operated in bad faith. The king was nothing more than a brute. And it didn't make much sense for a small island to control such a large uh, land as uh, the colonies. And so America has a sacred mission to be independent and be a democratic republic. Um, and this helped persuade some in Congress that uh, independence was the only logical conclusion. Uh, Congress adopts uh, a measure declaring independence in June 7, uh, 1776. Um, they were hoping that this formal explanation would rally support at home and invite foreign powers such as France to help them. Uh, Congress chose Thomas Jefferson to write the Declaration of Independence um, and it had three parts. The preamble stated that they had a right to break away to protect their life, liberty, and property. Uh, the second part listed uh, the grievances uh, of the colonies, uh, all the bad things that the British had been doing to them. Uh, and it was a formal declaration of independence, uh, again, making them an independent country. Uh, there were two groups that uh, are going to be against each other during uh, the Revolutionary War, and these are the Patriots and the Loyalists. Loyalists being uh, devoted to the King and the Patriots wanting independence. Uh, John Adams claimed that about a third of the population of the colonists were Loyalists and a third were Patriots. And the other third um, simply stood on the sidelines. Um, the Tories, the Loyalists, were hoping that the, uh, the colonies would return to being loyal to the king. Uh, this, the people who were most likely to be Loyalists were the conservatives, the educated, and the wealthy. They feared that if they did achieve independence that the mob might uh, be a threat to their property and position. Uh, it included the older, older generation and the Anglican uh, clergy. Here shows some of the strong points uh, for the Loyalists. Um, as far as uh, the areas where you had the most patriots, you would have gone to New England. Um, there was a, certainly a large population of Loyalists there ready and willing to separate themselves from the King. Uh, and they will fight the British and the Loyalists. Uh, they were most common among the poor and the lower class. Um, and they consisted of a minority of Americans. Uh, after the war, about a hundred, well, some say 80,000 to 100,000 Loyalists left America and went to Canada. Uh, their homes and property were confiscated. They were seen as traitors. About 50,000 fought for the British. Uh, some important battles that we'll need to know. Uh, Long Island was a defeat of George Washington, and George Washington will suffer many defeats, but continue. Uh, the Battle of Trenton and Princeton were uh, two minor uh, victories for George Washington earlier in the war. Um, the Battle of Saratoga really is a important battle to remember. Uh, they're not going to ask you uh, strategies and a great deal about uh, any of the battles, but Saratoga was a turning point in the war. It uh, showed the rest of the world that perhaps America could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the British and be successful. Uh, it, perf it was certainly a morale builder. Uh, and the upshot of this is that uh, it is a game changer. Uh, France will uh, come on board and um, sign an alliance with America and supply troops and ships and ammunition and things to conduct the war. Uh, Benedict Arnold, if his career had ended at Saratoga, he would have been revered as a great national hero. Uh, they defeat General Burgoyne um, and Gates and 
uh, who is the commanding general, accepts his sword. Saratoga uh, revived America's cause, um, and Gates is considered a hero of the battle. Although uh, Brigadier uh, General uh, Arnold was wounded during the battle, he certainly rallied the troops. And here shows a picture of Burgoyne surrendering, surrendering to Gates. Uh, and, and then eventually the, uh, the French will come on to the American side. Uh, Valley Forge is seen as a low point during the war, uh, mainly because they were running out of food, uh, poor weather conditions. Uh, uh, George Washington, surely by the strength of his own leadership, kept the uh, army together in the field. Um, in 1777, the Articles of Confederation was drafted by John Dickinson. This is going to be the first American constitution for uh, the 13 colonies. Uh, and this was established uh, in the Second Continental Congress as the permanent government. Eventually, it will be ratified in 1781 and serve as our first constitution until it's replaced in 1787. Uh, this government lasted uh, uh, about eight years, it proved to be somewhat ineffective. This is George Washington praying at Valley Forge. Again, here's a picture of the men at Valley Forge. Pretty tough conditions. Uh, as far as this new Articles of Confederation, uh, it had the power to conduct wars and foreign affairs and borrow money. Uh, the new government had no power to regulate trade, draft soldiers, or levy taxes. Um, and we'll stop there and we'll come back uh, second part and talk about uh, France entering on the side of the Americans.